Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Shannon Holmes. I'm a medical physicist with Standard Imaging, and it is my pleasure today to be able to tell you a little bit about Adaptivo. A little housekeeping before we get going. I am recording the webinar today, um, so if you have to step out or you get interrupted, um, watch for a link um, probably this afternoon that will be sent to you for the, the recording for the webinar. Um, if you have questions as I'm doing this presentation, um, please feel free to enter them at the time into the question box in the GoToMeeting dialog. Um, it's a little difficult to monitor that as I'm walking through this presentation, but I will certainly circle back to those at the end. Um, and for those of you who wish to have CAMPEP CE credit for attending, uh, keep an eye on your email for the um, survey link to the attendance quiz. That should show up pretty quickly after the webinar is completed. Um, so for those CE credits, our learning objectives today are what are the capabilities of a product like Adaptivo, why would you need a tool like this, and what sort of errors can we detect? Um, last little bit here, I'll go through introduction and overview and um, just a, a slight introduction to each of the, or a few details, I guess, about each of the three modules, and then I'd like to spend most of the time in that software demo. Um, and of course, circle back to your questions at the end. So what is Adaptivo? It is three things. It's a, it's a software tool that does three things for you. The first is pretreatment QA, just using your portal imager. Um, so if you're still using a phantom like a map check or an arc check or a delta four, um, you can save a lot of setup time by eliminating this phantom um, from your workflow. Um, and you can verify your plan deliver, delivery just with that um, through air delivery to your portal imager. The second thing we do with Adaptivo is daily exit dose monitoring. So this really is just capturing that beam that's being attenuated by the patient. This is the real treatment beam during the, the treatment um, to monitor both beam delivery and some information about patient positioning. Um, we do analyze all the data automatically and notify you if there are things um, out of your set tolerance. And we include some easy troubleshooting and report generation tools as well. The third thing that Adaptivo does is the daily and cumulative 3D dose analysis. So we're, we're actually calculating the 3D doses on the daily cone beam CTs. So you can quantify how um, the patient anatomy changes or setup variations um, really affect the quality of their treatment. Um, we do pre-program Adaptivo with some Quantec and RTOG-based uh, parameters for DVH analysis, um, but these are customizable for your clinic as well. So in short, what we're really doing here is giving you a tool um, that can fill what I, I see really as a gaping hole in radiation oncology today, and that is that view into what's going on within the patient and how are those changes affecting your dose distributions. We do a lot of QA on the machine. We do a lot of, of fine monitoring of our um, MLC leaves and our doses that we're giving uh, or, or the, the machine can deliver. Um, but then we leave the patient um, kind of in that realm of the unknown for the course of their treatment. And here now you can finally get a view into what's going on and, and what impact those changes have um, on the patient's treatment. So just a little more detail here, the pretreatment module, as I mentioned, is a quick and easy verification that you can deliver the plan um, as intended. It is a through air delivery to the portal imager, no couch, no phantom, no patient in the way. Um, we predict what that image is going to look like, um, both from a, a dose magnitude standpoint and um, that 2D information. Um, it is a composite 2D image for each beam. Um, and we compare the measured image to the predicted image um, and notify you depending on your particular settings um, of what you want to be notified of, um, whether or not this beam has passed, um, or even if just any pretreatment QA has been delivered, you can choose to have that notify, uh, notification as well. The in vivo module is that exit dose monitoring. So you really are tracking the doses uh, or the, the beam that is being delivered to the patient. Um, we do, again, compare that measured exit image with a predicted exit image. So you can see not only are you treating consistently, but are you treating the way you intended to. Um, we do take the daily couch position into account. So if that's affecting that exit image, um, we can account for that. Um, we also do what we call a signed gamma. Gamma, by definition, doesn't have a, a sign, plus or minus sign. It's a value between zero and one is passing, and of course, above one is failing. 
Um, but we take those failing pixels and we assign a plus or minus to them so that we can show you whether um, pixels are failing your gamma analysis because they're being measured hotter than predicted or colder than predicted. Um, so it, this really does help quite a bit in terms of the troubleshooting and, and determination of what's causing these problems. Um, and then, of course, as with the other module, automatic notification um, of your choice when deviations are detected. For the, the third module is where we do those 3D calculations. That's the adaptive module. Um, so here is where we do take um, the, the daily cone beam CT. We um, use a deformable image registration algorithm called Morphons um, to take the planning image and map it to the, uh, the daily cone beam CT. So we can drop the contours onto that daily CT. We calculate the dose then on the daily cone beam, um, so we can report the daily doses that are being delivered. Um, but then we also use the same deformation map um, to take those doses back to the planning image um, to be able to add together every day's treatment on that common geometry of the plan so that we can report to you as well um, what cumulative doses have been delivered to the patient. Um, as I mentioned, the, um, the analysis, or well, calculation is automatic as with the other modules, but the analysis um, of the DVH is done using some preset Quantec and RTOG um, values, but those are customizable. Um, but the, the nice part about this in terms of integrating into your workflow is that once a treatment delivery has been detected, Adaptivo will pull down all of the, um, the requisite information, the, the stuff that's recorded in the RNV, the couch position, the MU delivered, all of that, um, as well as any exit images for that in vivo analysis um, and any cone beam CT. The most recent cone beam CT is used for these uh, calculations um, for the 3D doses. Um, we do require currently a cone beam on day one to kick off these ca um, calculations, but after that you can acquire a cone beam at whatever frequency um, your physician prefers. So obviously you get the best um, information about patient positioning and the effect on the dose distributions when you're taking a cone beam every day. Um, but you could take a cone beam once or twice a week and still get an idea of the trends on a patient, especially a head and neck patient that's losing weight or something like that, um, if you're not as concerned about um, doses right next to the cord that you really want to monitor every day. You can certainly do that. Adaptivo will use the most recent cone beam um, for any given day's calculation. The dashboard is um, quite informative, very clear. Um, we have three types of flags, plan flag, daily flag, and cumulative dose flags. Um, so the plan flag tells you that um, something about the dose distribution when you first brought it into Adaptivo, um, something about that planned dose distribution violated the tolerance tables we have in Adaptivo. Um, this may have been a compromise the physician had to make, it may have been something that was known going into this treatment, or it may have been something that was missed, and so we'd, we'd like to bring it to your attention. The daily flags tell you that something in that daily dose calculation on that cone beam CT is out of tolerance or is violating those, those tolerance values. Um, and the cumulative flag to me is one of the most powerful pieces of this software. It's actually a predictive flag. So it says that based on how you've been treating so far, you're going to be out of tolerance by the end of the course of treatment. Um, and, it, and it gives you that value um, that, that you would be projected to hit um, for that particular tolerance point. Um, so that hopefully you have the information soon enough to be able to make informed decisions or, or lead your physician to make informed decisions um, about what needs to be done for a patient um, in order to avoid that um, endpoint um, or, or if that's an acceptable uh, violation, then, then at least know that, it, that it's happening. Um, and as with the other modules, of course, you're automatically notified either within the application or via email, um, depending on what you've chosen to have set up um, of any deviations. Um, so let me step into the software now. Go over to my Adaptivo computer. Um, when you log into Adaptivo, we'll re reload this here. You, you log into Adaptivo. Um, it is a web based application for most of this um, that I'll be showing you. You can access it from any point within your hospital network. So each user has their login and can make a customized homepage to show only those patients that they choose to follow. 
So we do show these on a subscribe, unsubscribe basis. And you can filter, of course, based on uh, physician or LINAC um, or, or just on an individual basis, the patients that you need to follow or, um, or don't want to have show up on your dashboard. And if you were to fill in, um, say that you're a physician and you're filling in for your partner on a, a given week because they're on vacation, you can just say show all and it will show all the patients under treatment as well. So at the top of the page, we show patient treatment deliveries. Um, down at the bottom is where we show the QA deliveries. Um, so what you're looking at here is which patient and plan this was, when it was delivered, and we do sort by latest delivered uh, most uh, or, or at the top of the list. Um, and then you can see how many times a plan has been delivered. Um, a red, green, or yellow color scheme is used here to indicate, um, in this case, one or more beams was out of tolerance. Um, that's the red coloring um, for this given delivery. Green, of course, means every, every beam passed um, your, your set uh, gamma criteria, and yellow means there's something one or more beam in the warning range. I can either click on the plan or click on one of those individual results uh, points. Let me make these images bigger. Um, and you go to a plan overview screen. So what you see here is the, the number of times the plan has been delivered. Fraction one, fraction two is how they're labeled here. And then each of the beams um, that was delivered. Below the image, this is a um, the measured image with the hot cold gamma points overlaid on it. Um, we do show the gamma pass rate um, at the bottom again with that red, yellow, green color scheme. Um, so you can see on this one it was just that first beam on fraction one here that was failing and we're failing cold everywhere. We're pretty dismal on our uh, gamma pass rate. So I can dig into details about this beam. Um, first thing I see is planned versus delivered monitor units. There was an interrupt um, on this one, and it, we didn't deliver the full beam. Um, so that was that was the pretty uh, clear motivation for delivering a second time. So we can go look at that second delivery. Um, here we have planned versus delivered monitor units matching. Now um, we show the delivered versus planned dose rate. So you can see that it was delivered in the same dose rate as planned. And really this is the, the treatment plan that's being delivered in treatment mode. Um, so it should be matching um, what the plan was. Meter set exposure and number of frames are values that come from the imager. Um, so those can be used uh, in terms of, of tracking down whether um, you've integrated the full image um, with the, the full number of frames you, that are expected. Um, this is a, is a composite image, as I mentioned. Um, what you see in the images here, this is that hot cold gamma over the measured image that we showed on the plan overview. You could also show this if you want. Um, this is what we call an ordinary gamma. So those failing pixels here are shown in red. Um, they match these cold pixels on the hot cold gamma. Um, but we're also showing gamma values in between 0.5 and 1 um, in green here. So you can see the places where they're starting to disagree but not yet failing according to your criteria. Um, and then we also show the overlay of the measured and the predicted images. We show X and Y profiles through those. Um, so you can see the comparison of the, the measured in the dash line with the, the predicted image in the solid red. Um, and then we show what we call a gamma matrix. Um, so you may be set at 3%, 3 millimeters for your pretreatment QA. This would be the value that's reported on your plan overview and is used for flagging on your home screen. Um, but you can see we calculate uh, the gamma value for all of these distance to agreement and dose difference criteria. So you can see not only where you are at this point, but where you start to hit those warning and failure regions as you tighten down those criteria. And then we show histograms, a gamma histogram, as well as a dose difference histogram. So if you've reviewed all of your, um, your beams for a given delivery, then you can go back to this plan overview screen, select that delivery that you've just reviewed. Um, and this actions button and the left-hand panel are content dependent. So depending what I've selected, what's displayed and the actions that I can take um, will, will change appropriately. So if I've selected that fraction, I can now make a QA summary report from that fraction. Um, we we pre-configure some templates for these reports, but these, of course, are configurable for your clinic as well. Um, they're currently set uh, kind of based on US billing right now. So page one, we have an overview of all of the beams that have been delivered, what the gamma configuration was, um, what that pass rate was, um, and you get, of course, that green, yellow, red uh, color scheme. Anything that's been changed from the default will be highlighted. 
um, or flagged. Any comments or, or physics reports that have been made for a given delivery are shown here. Um, and then the subsequent pages, we do show the treatment or the beam details for each of the individual beams. Um, so these really are the, the images and the information that we just looked at in the web page um, are shown here as well. If you're happy with the report, uh, save it to PDF. It tells me it's queued, and then back on my um, interface here, it shows uh, under my reports tab, it shows the reports that have been made um, for this patient. Um, so this is your PDF. You can um, download it, put it in your RNB system, sign off on it um, as your, your normal workflow might be. So back on my home page then, um, at the top of the home page, it shows me the patients that I'm following. Um, so here you see a number of deliveries, again, that same red, yellow, green color scheme. Um, light gray are fractions that have been scheduled but not delivered yet. Um, and then these shaded ones are actually average exit images. So you can either manually select um, a few fractions and have it calculate an average of those, um, or you can set the software automatically to calculate an average every so many fractions, like every five fractions. Um, so you can look at not just individual days, but also whether some of those deviations that you're seeing um, in those individual days are systematic deviations and they, they also show up in the average, or they're random and they, they tend to wash out. This particular patient, this is a breast patient with a failure on day one. Um, we can go look at that one. So in my plan overview screen, what I'm looking at here is um, the hot cold gamma over top of the plan DRR rather than over the measured image. Um, although I should show you, we have any of these images um, you can look at. So uh, if you want to switch around from any of the images we have, they're all available on that plan overview screen. Um, so we're looking at that failure on day one. You know what, let me make this bigger. Um, this patient, um, you can see with that hot, cold gamma, we're measuring hot at the skin surface. We're measuring cold in here at the chest wall. This is the DRR based on the plan, not the cone beam CT or, and not a portal from the day. So we're, we're anticipating the patient should be in the, the proper treatment position. And when they're not, um, you can see these deviations. So it's pretty obvious from this one that she was offset and you know which direction she was offset to. Um, so knowing that they were actually able to set this uh, patient up pretty consistently. Let me go back a little smaller. I'm on a, a smaller screen than I usually use. Um, you can see she was set up pretty consistently the rest of the time. Um, so they got quite good results for her. Um, through the rest of the course of her treatment because they found out that that deviation on day one. Um, the therapists were able to be a little bit more careful, a little more consistent with her. Um, if I go into beam details for any one of these, um, it's a lot the same information we had from the, uh, as in the, the pretreatment QA. Um, what you're looking at here then, that hot cold gamma over the, over the planned DRR as well as a hot cold gamma over the measured image. Um, we can also show you the image registration of the uh, between the predicted image and the measured image. Um, this is the image that used to be on the right hand side here. Um, we do show that ordinary gamma both over the DRR and over the measured image. So you can see again, not only where you fail, but where you're starting to disagree, um, but not yet triggering or not yet passing those gamma thresholds. And then we show you the plan fluence for the beam as well as the portal dose just for your reference. Um, same sort of thing here with the profiles as with pretreatment QA. We have the X and Y profiles of the measured compared with the predicted image. Um, same gamma matrix. Here we're set at 5% three millimeters for our in vivo measurements um, because we're accounting for a little more uncertainty with patient positioning. Um, but you can again see where you hit that warning region where you start to fail as you tighten down those criteria. Um, and then we show those same gamma histograms and dose difference histograms we had before. We do actually do three different calculations when we have an exit image. Um, we do a predicted with the couch as it was in the treatment plan. Um, for this breast patient, obviously, they didn't do a couch uh, replacement. It didn't matter. No beams were going through the couch. Uh, but if there was a beam through the couch, it would be uh, accounted for there as it was set in the plan. 
The second calculation we do is a comparison with a predicted image, but taking the daily couch position into account. So you can see if it's just a change in that couch position for the day that caused a change in the attenuation of the beam um, that of course changed our results. You can see whether that affected um, the calculation. This rules-based results tell, shows you one of these two, either the predicted with the couch as planned or the predicted with the daily couch position, depending on which beam angles you're allowing Adaptivo to use that daily couch correction um, to report a passing gamma, if the predicted with uh, couch as planned is not passing. And then the third calculation we do um, is a relative calculation with a reference fraction. Um, by default, this is day one, um, but you can also set a patient to relative mode um, if there's something about the beam that hasn't been commissioned yet, like a, a physical wedge that's not commissioned in Adaptivo. So you can still get that consistency information um, even if you don't have the predicted image, um, but the, the predicted is obviously the preferred method. Um, what I like to point out with this relative comparison on this breast patient is that if you're only using relative mode, um, I know some software products out there function that way, um, on day one you're hoping you're in the right position. And on day two if you were to get a result like this, um, you don't know if you're out of tolerance on day one or if your setup was wrong on day two, which one's right, which one's not. Um, you have to do a lot more troubleshooting to try and figure out what's going on. Whereas with Adaptivo and that predicted image right on day one, you know if you're set up as you had planned to have the patient set up, um, and you can proceed with confidence after that. The other case study I wanted to step into here quickly um, is a lung patient, right upper lung SBRT, where we've got warnings each of the days of treatment. This is one where that couch correction did come into play. Um, you can see for all of the beams, our, our green gamma pass rate looks pretty good until we get down to beam seven, and here we're, um, we're hitting the warning region each time. So if I view beam details about this one, you see we're measuring hot at the middle of our uh, our image compared with a predicted image. Um, and I <clears throat> noticed first thing when I opened this, um, beam seven was planned to go through the couch rail. Nobody caught this at plan review for this particular patient. Um, so my first thought as a physicist is that the therapist moved the couch rail out of the way. Um, in a lot of centers, they're trained to do this. This is part of their normal procedure, um, but it wasn't accounted for um, in the dose calculations. So if I go look at the daily couch position correction, um, the story actually gets just a little more interesting. Um, this LINAC actually had an IGRT couch, not a couch with rails. So the error was not so much planning the beam through the couch rail, um, but rather selecting the wrong couch when doing the couch substitution in the treatment planning system. Um, so this is a... a um, an error that would never have been caught be, by log files alone. Um, log files would not register that difference. Um, and it's not something that would be caught by a relative comparison with a, a reference fraction either, um, because I'm treating consistently on this patient. I'm just not treating the way I had planned to treat. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have the cone beams from this patient, so I can't show you how that affects the 3D dose distribution. Um, but these modules do stand separately um, on their own two feet, so you can use one um, without the other if you don't have the other information. Um, it was done deliberately that way. Um, so before I, I take up too much of your time, I'd like to, to step into that 3D calculation, the adaptive viewer. Um, the errors that happen for patient treatments um, in the, those, or that are, are noted in those 3D calculations um, show up here on a structure-by-structure um, structure basis. So you can see which structure gen generated the error, and you can see which kind of error it was, if it was a plan error, cumulative error, or a daily error that's showing up. Um, the one I wanted to step into here quick is this lung patient. We had a couple errors in the exit doses, and we have a couple errors um, that are showing up in the daily calculations. Um, somebody turned off all of my structures on here. At any rate, um, we can do heart and lungs. Sure, why not? So... What I'd like to show you on this one, um, what you see first, and I, I'll point out here, the adaptive tab is right next to the in vivo tab. So if you're looking at a given patient's plan and you're looking at their in vivo information, um, it's just a step away, really. 
um, to go to the adaptive data. So this would be their in vivo data, and I can go right back to my adaptive data on the other tab. Um, but what you see first under adaptive is the DVHs. So the daily DVH on the left um, shows you uh, the, in circles is the daily dose calculated on that daily cone beam CT. The dash line is that dose mapped back to your planning image. So if you have a good deformation, those two should overlay um, or pretty close to overlay. Um, and then the solid line is the plan. Um, so you have a, that reference to compare to. On the right-hand side is my cumulative DVH. So this shows you um, the DVH up to and through the most recent delivered fraction. Um, <clears throat> solid line is the plan scaled to however many fractions have been delivered. And of course, the, the dash line is the um, that summation of those daily doses, so the cumulative delivered dose. I can step back to any prior delivered fraction and see what the DVH looked like on that day. Um, I can step forward through fractions and see how things look as well. So you see fraction 33, we had a pretty nasty under coverage of the target on that day. Um, and again, on fraction 36, this was even worse. Um, we see under coverage of the target. Um, so let's dig into this and figure out what's going on. Um, you can either scroll down to open trending information, um, or if you select a given uh, structure on the left and say view trending, um, it will open those as well. So what we show for trends, we're looking at PTV here. Treatment dose point trend shows you um, is actually snapshots of the daily DVHs. So it's these points off your daily DVH at each of the fractions. Um, so you see that under coverage on fraction 33 as well as fraction 36 that we were looking at. And you can see this happened on a couple of prior fractions as well. We had a little under coverage of the target, um, but fraction 36 really is the worst offender on that one. The cumulative dose point ratio plot shows you essentially the same thing, but for the cumulative DVH. Um, here we are taking a ratio of cumulative to plan, so ideally everything would be right at one all the way across the board. Um, but you can see how those shifts, um, those under, under coverage days, um, those shifts in the daily DVH affected your cumulative DVH um, as you went through your treatments as well. Image percentage tells us how much of this structure was within the field of view of the cone beam CT on a given day. Um, so that tells you how well you've captured the daily geometry and, um, of course, accordingly, how much faith you can put into the, uh, the doses that are calculated on that, um, actually reflecting the daily doses. We track the volume of the structure compared with the plan, so you can see if there are major changes, uh, either daily changes like bladder filling um, for that structure, um, or trends, um, like in a head and neck patient losing weight. I'll show you one of those here in a bit. Um, and then we also track displacement of this particular structure. Um, actually, all the structures, but I'm, I'm showing you the PTV. Um, and here you can see um, those, you see spikes on that displacement plot. Let me make this bigger. You see spikes on that displacement plot on those same days that we saw under coverage of the target. And it's always here really inferior, superior. There's a right left offset too. Um, but on fraction 36, uh, our worst offender, we're looking at nearly three centimeter offset of the PTV in the inferior superior direction. So I have a pretty good idea of what might have gone on with this patient um, in terms of their positioning before I even opened the 3D viewers for this patient. Um, but we do have 3D viewers. So up at the top of this adaptive page, um, I have a fraction viewer and a cumulative viewer. Um, they do take a moment to open, so I've got them open down here. Um, you can look at uh, patients in any orientation, transverse coronal or sagittal. You can scroll through to any slice um, to see what's going on in that particular slice. Um, and then what nobody else can do for you, I can actually step through each of the fractions. Um, I'll do that here in a moment. Well, actually, I can start now. Um, my button go there we go step through the fractions and see how things change from day to day what you're looking at and i should have described first um, is the image registration in the upper left of the cone beam ct with the planning ct so this is the cone beam in the, the position it, uh, the patient was for treatment um, Anywhere we have that cone beam CT, we use it in this daily image. Um, we call it merged CT because we use the cone beam wherever we have it. And outside the field of the view, we, we do use the planning CT. So we have the full geometry, um, even if we haven't captured the full geometry with the cone beam CT. Um, but obviously, we only have information about the daily positioning um, in, within that field of view of the cone beam. 
So dose is calculated here. The um, contours are generated using that deformable image registration. Um, so you can e evaluate those as well, scrolling through the slices on, on this viewer. Then that daily dose is mapped back to that planning image down here on the lower left. So this is today's dose shown on the planning CT um, and the plan shown for comparison. So now if I step through these fractions, let's go find, uh, there's a little bit of offset. We saw that in the displacement plot. Um, let's go find that fraction 36 that we had been looking at. Um, there we are, fraction 36. So you can see where the tumor is today, um, where it had been planned to be. Um, my guess on this one is they shifted the wrong direction. They had a superior shift and they shifted inferiorly instead. Um, so they actually treated the wrong, the wrong place on this patient on this day. Um, unfortunately, we've seen um, a surprising number of these with some of the... the um, view that we now get into this with adaptivo. So hopefully this will this will be corrected. Um, but then that cumulative viewer, we can go look at to see the effect of, um, let's go back coronal, the effect of these offsets um, of these misalignments on this particular patient. So you're looking at image registration for the most recently delivered fraction, um, the cumulative dose, so this is the summation of all those calculated daily doses. Um, this is the dose you've given um, to your patient, and then the plan scaled to however many fractions have been delivered um, for comparison. And then the upper right shows the um, percent local percent differences between these two uh, dose distributions. So you can see where we were delivered dose we hadn't planned to were hotter than predicted. Um, or hotter than planned, I mean, um, and then the cold region down at the bottom of this uh, PTV region. So again, we're trying to give you the tools to really be able to make informed decisions for your patients and to see what's going on with these dose distributions. Um, the last case study I want to step into here quickly um, is a head and neck patient. Um, so one that, that had a lot of daily errors on, on things like the parotids, um, if we step through there, let me scroll a little differently, step through their um, DVHs here, you can see just on a day-to-day -day basis things changing um, relatively drastically one day to the next. Not so much under coverage of the target like we saw in that lung patient, but some over coverage there on the parotids especially. Um, but consistently higher than planned anyway. Um, if I go down to trend plots for those parotids, um, you can see in my treatment dose point trend, I don't have any major spikes, uh, but I am consistently higher than planned um, for most of those points on the DVH. Cumulative dose point ratio is trending upwards, um, so we're gradually giving more and more dose compared to the, the predicted values. Image percentage is good. We captured the full, um, of course, the parotids in the cone beam of this head and neck patient. Um, volume is trending down. This patient was losing weight, so their parotids uh, were shrinking. And then the displacement plot shows some noise, no major spikes like we saw in the other, uh, the lung patient, but there is a, a relative amount of variation from day to day. Um, if I open those, that fraction viewer, um, let's go look at this in sagittal, um, and step through day to day, um, you can see variation in their setup. Um, I had a therapist friend point out to me that they may actually have had the wrong cradle on a couple of days because there's a pretty drastic difference um, in the, the shape of the neck. Um, so in general, no no huge offsets, but, but definitely variation. Um, from day to day. And then if you wanted to see um, the effect of all of these, of course, in the cumulative dose, that's our cumulative viewer. Um, let's go back sagittal. Um, and you can look at the dose distributions um, that we had for those days, or, or excuse me, cumulative dose distribution of what's been delivered to this patient compared to the plan, um, and look at the dose differences. So luckily we're staying off the cord um, here, but we are a little hot um, 
in some regions. So this patient, they, they did decide they didn't need to replan. Um, what I was told on this one was uh, that the mask was just a little bit loose and that combined with the weight loss just made the setup a little bit sloppy on this patient. But now you actually have some insight into how, the, how that really affected their, the quality of their treatment. Um, so back here to my slides. Um, I didn't want to stop. Um, just to kind of summarize what we've gone over. Um, I haven't done this in a while. Um, what we're really showing you with Adaptivo is that we're streamlining, we're automating your pretreatment QA. Um, we are giving you that daily treatment delivery monitoring. There we go, that's better. Um, with the exit doses uh, in the in vivo module, um, we can give you the daily and the cumulative delivered dose with our 3D calculations on the cone beam CT. Um, all of our calculations and notifications are automated. So as long as, as we're able to query your RNV system, um, we can find out that there are new, new treatments being delivered, pull down any information about that delivery, do the calculation, and then notify you if things require your attention. Um, we're really trying to give you here a complete and integrated solution that works well with your workflow in your clinic um, while providing a, a large amount of value, I mean, filling this, um, this need that we have in our clinics right now. So before I go to your questions, I wanted to step through the, um, the survey that you'll get with the CAMPEP um, link. So the, the first of the questions is which of the following statements about our use of the portal imager is true? Um, do we use no phantom or with a phantom? Do we compare with predicted images for both the pretreatment and in vivo? Do we take the daily couch position into account and various combinations of these? The answer is F. Um, the only one that's not true here is that with a phantom for pretreatment QA. We do not require a phantom um, for that pretreatment QA. Second question is true or false, the measured, measured images are used to back project dose onto the cone beam CT for the 3D dose calculations. That's false. Uh, we do use the planned beams for the 3D dose calculation. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty that comes with the back project projection, and it also leaves you dependent on being able to collect that exit image. Um, if there's a beam that you can't collect it for or a beam that your, your uh, therapist forgot to deploy the imager for, um, we don't want you to be stuck with no tools. So um, we, we've also found, honestly, that the, um, the primary player in terms of the changes in the dose distribution within the patient really is the patient themselves. Um, and so we, we find that we're um, getting better information from the system this way. So we do use the planned beams for the 3D dose distributions. The third question is, do we require a daily cone beam in order to... or or is the daily cone beam required in order to get the 3D dose distribution? Um, and the answer here is that it's optional. We do require it on day one, but otherwise the most recent cone beam CT will be used for the 3D dose calculation. So you don't have to have a cone beam every day in order to get some information from this. Um, which of the following dosimetric issues detected by Adaptivo would not have been caught by log file analysis alone? Wrong couch in the plan, wrong plan, patient misalignment, or various combinations of those? Um, and the answer is A and C. Both wrong couch in the plan and patient misalignment cannot be ca caught by a log file analysis alone. Um, and then alerts are generated in our adaptive module based on which 3D dose distribution, distributions, of course, it's all, both the, the plan, the daily, and the cumulative um, are analyzed. So with that, I will happily circle back to your questions. Um, feel free to, um, to enter your, your questions there. Um, there is a question about Mosaic. Yes, we are in active development on the Mosaic interface. Um, it's been a long road trying to work through those things with Alexa, um, especially with the, the way they're running their software right now. Um, but we are, um, we are collecting data in a Mosaic clinic um, and um, hoping to have that integrated in the software. Um, in, in I, I don't want to promise a timeline. Software always takes longer than, than we expect, but uh, hopefully in relatively short order. So 
So I'll hang out here for a little bit and answer more questions, but otherwise, um, thank you all very much for your attention today. Um, please follow up with us um, if you do think of anything after the fact. Um, and otherwise, uh, we look forward to talking to you at a future date.